Jimmy Butler, jump shot. It's good. Big buckets from Jimmy Buckets here in the pool. Denver does have a timeout, but they're not using it. Four seconds. Murray, step back. Three pointers. Long go. Fight for the rebound. Martin. And it's over. The Miami Heat have tied the NBA Finals. This is Rafi Guzon, and you are tuned in to Nothing But That Sports Talk. Get you in the game. The Cinderella story in the Miami Heat just does not stop. As I welcome to this episode of the But That Sports Talk or Feet Blues, I'm alongside a very special guest of mine. Some of you have already seen her in my interview as Planted Not Barry, but now you get to see her on Nothing But That Sports Talk. Welcome, Rachel Eva, on the show. Thank you for stopping by. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for having me. It's always fun to talk with like minded individuals, especially when we're talking sports. <laughs> And share yeah. our thoughts. Yeah, love exactly. it. Exactly. And uh, don't worry, that little event in the background will be the topic of conversation in the show. But I want to talk, but 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 since that's not for another couple of months, I want to get to talking about game two in the NBA Finals as Miami managed to come back uh, after blowing an early 11 game lead. They come back from 15 down to, take, to, to tie the series up in one game apiece after Jamal Murray failed to tie the game up. What are your overall thoughts on this series so far? I think it's a wonderful series. It's very entertaining. I mean, the Miami Heat and the, the 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 Denver Nuggets. I mean, it's just it was just so so entertaining. The intensity in this this matchup is is wonderful. I love to. I, this is what I love about basketball. You know what I mean? But because both teams are putting up a great fight. You know what I mean? And ultimately, the Heat. I mean, they they came through in several instances. If in the first you know round, I mean, here we are and. It's it's been it's been amazing for me to see Jimmy Butler how he maintains his composure how professional he remains even though you have these players that try to you know they try to get you riled up you know and get you out of your game so it's a mind game because you know I used to coach I used to play so there's times when you know how to push people's buttons you know and Jimmy Butler is like what do I do to push his buttons to get him off of his game you know what I mean and and with that with, with Jimmy Butler being such an iconic figure. And on his team and everything, I give credit to Eric Spolster, you know what I mean, the coach, because he keeps these guys level-headed. He has veterans on his bench that helps, you know, kind of translate the message. And um, you, you don't see too many, you know, negative, you know, behavior on the court by the Miami Heat. I just love the organization. And my guy, I love, I love um, Pat Riley. I've always been a Pat Riley fan. You know, you got the Knicks uniform on, you got the Knicks hat on. That's what I loved about the Knicks. You know, I I root for them here and there. I am a New Yorker, yes, indeed, and New York is in my heart. You know, but as far as like talent-wise and organizational structure, you know, I love the Miami Heat. And Pat Riley is where it's at. You know, he I think he does a great job organizing his administration and his staff, the coaching, even translation down to the players. Look how they play on the court. They're relentless. You know, so I love watching the Heat play. Exactly, and well, since you mentioned you're a Knicks fan. Like, how upset were you that that the Miami Heat had that the Knicks were one of the teams that Miami had to get through in order to get this far in the playoffs as an AC? Uh, considering yeah. we, we, but we wanted we we got to the finals as AC before. But how upset is it that we're on the wrong end of the stick? Oh, uh, upset? No, but you know, if you look at talent wise, and like you know, and you go up and look up the organizational structure. Um, right now, where the Knicks are, they need more help. They need more help in the, in, the, in the back office, the front office, on the court. You know, they just need help. So they, we're going to get there. The, the Knicks are certainly going to get there. Everybody has their year, and it just wasn't the Knicks year, you know. So um, I just encourage the fans, don't leave. Just stick around, you know what I mean? But the, the Miami Heat, they just kind of pulled off such a wonderful, you know, playoff series. You know, they're doing a wonderful job. I mean, I really give credit to the coaching. I really do, you know, and coaching plays a role because you have that leader on the sideline, you know, to direct you. And um, that, and then you have sub leaders in a sense, you know, you have your, 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 your player coaches like Haslam, you have people that are veterans on the sideline that keep and, and maintain that, that, ex, that um, leadership role and that, you know, that, that support, should I say, you know, although they don't get much playing time, but they do. You know what I mean? Because that player, that playing time translates from the bench onto the court. You know what I mean? So, and everybody knowing their role plays a major difference, you know? But you look at the performances, you know, made by some of the players. You know, you had Jimmy Butler who scored 33 points and bam, 16 points and 12 rebounds. You know, we look at 12 rebounds because we're we're watching like high school sports and college sports. 
12 rebounds in the NBA? <laughs> you know what you have to fight to get 12 rebounds? You know what I mean? What you have to, what you're up against to get 12 rebounds? You know what I mean? So I give credit to those players, you know? So they all come through. I mean, I don't blame you. And, and the fact that they came together to add on to it, you picked up Jimmy yeah. Butler during the 2019 offseason. You developed Bam Bio from when he first came into the league. You developed Tyler Hero. And then yeah, you had a couple him. undrafted pieces to, to put together their heat culture. This makes you wonder. Even Lowry, you know. Of course, Kyle Lowry won a ring with the Toronto Raptors in 2019 as well. But this has you thinking. Does this defeat the whole purpose of the NBA teams creating super teams? Because this yeah. Miami Heat team, they, they built for the ground up. Yeah. You don't need superstars in order to build culture. As Kendrick Brooks I agree. Said. I totally agree. Because, I mean, at one point, I just knew the Warriors were going to breeze through. You know, and then look at them. That empire just crushed. You know, I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. You have this, this, you know what I mean? You have Steph Curry. You know, have all these great players, even Poole. And they have players coming off the bench, you know. So it really doesn't matter. You know, I think it's more of the team structure. If you look at the Heat organization, you know, from their conditioning, you know, how how much of a unit they play. They play well together. I mean, last night was a clear indicator. You saw that the passing, the floor, how they spread the floor. You know, a lot of teams, they play that full out one in, you know, so it's a lot of like structure on the court that some of the things that we don't look at, you know, as fans, but those are the things that the intangible things are what brought them here to this, you know, finals now. Exactly. That's that's a very interesting point. And um, do you see the Miami Heat pulling off the series victory? Um. Okay. So I look at it in two ways. One is a business, you know, it's a business. I mean, because you see now, you look at the sports betting, you know, you look at the sports betting, how much money they make sports betting. So I look at it two ways. I, I, I If I'm going to sports bet, you know, I'm going to say, okay, well, that heat would be a great pick. You know what I mean? It'll be a great pick. But here we are. It can go either way. So now it's like, what, do they just play? Or, you know, some people feel like the games are, are rigged. You know, some people feel like, no, it's all talent. You know, but to to for the Heat to get where they are today, that was really really like impressive because they don't have the size. When coming into this 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 finals, I'm like, okay, who is gonna guard Murray? Who is gonna guard Jokic? You know what I'm saying? Who's gonna guard him? <laughs> Bam clearly showed us. Do you know what I mean? Because Jokic can do it all. Bring the ball up at the court. He he drive in the middle and dish off. You know what I mean? In in inside out. And he could play outside in. So that's hard to guard. And he's, what, seven feet? You know what I mean? So I, now coming in, I'm like, okay, well, who's going to guard those two? I want to know who's going to guard those two. Because now this is going to be a sweep. Now they're one and one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so exactly. it's interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's deep, deep. And, you, and as I mean, I went to the Super Teams reference earlier. You know why that we won't, that, that, that from 1999 to 2023, we never see AC get this far to, in the playoffs? It's always what? because of the super teams went right away. Oh, uh, yes. It's, it's, yes. It's Stephen Curry's Warriors or Tim Duncan said to us. Correct. All the yeah. bronze teams when the teams is during the days of the Cavaliers and Miami Heat. And then, of course, of course, the Los Angeles Lakers in the bubble. Well, I mean, this makes the 15 Miami Heat team that went to the finals of the bubble like Child's Play, which is why in, in almost every episode since, I always keep saying, what is this, the NBA bubble? I mean, <laughs> like, like, seriously. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting, though. You know, and that's what makes it fun to watch, you know, especially when you see something go against the, what you thought was going to happen. You know what I mean? So it's fun. It's fun for me. Yeah, it's very fun. And um, I got it's wrap up this conversation about the Miami Heat versus the Denver Nuggets. I mean, like, if, if this AC and Miami Heat team were to go up and play a, a fancy seven-game playoff series against the 99, 1999 New York Knicks, who you think you win how many games? You said 1999 next? Yes. Who's touching them? You get what I'm saying? I like mean, if they can beat the Knicks this era. Well, first of all, hold up. Though, first of all, the players are different. The style of play is different. You know what I mean? Those po those were real post players. Tell me, you know what I mean? Like it's very rare you find, you know, someone over six eight, six nine in the post. Now look at Jokic. You know what I mean? Now they want to shoot from look at Embiid. They want to be out on the three point line. Let's get your butt in the paint. You know what I'm saying? Like, get in the paint. So that's what we're missing now in this era. R true post players, you know, solid point guards, you know. So 
you know, back in those days, not a lot of point guards were scoring 30 and 40 points. You know, now they score and shooting from stepping over half court, shooting from half court. I'm not taking away from the game because if that's your skill set, then, hey, by all means, you know. But the, the, the game was built different back then, built different. You know what I mean? Because then the Heat, I mean, the Knicks came down and you had, you know, when they went to playoffs, they had to deal with the Pacers. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And who was out there? You know, um, uh, what's his name? His sister plays. Reggie, Reggie Miller. You know what I'm saying? So, I th- basketball was totally different then. Yeah, there wasn't that many three point shooters. I mean, no. yeah, Alan Houston would eat Jay Butler for lunch. And yeah, don't it was hard. Patrick, and don't even get me started on Patrick Ewing versus Bam out of bio. Oh, no, no. Don't even get me started on, on what's the name? Larry Johnson versus Cody Zeller. What? No way. You Is see what I'm saying? No. <laughs> no. I mean, These guys get a little quick elbow in the, the mouth. 19, of them. I mean, they out for a couple of days. I mean, no, the no. 1999 Knicks, not everybody came into the roster undrafted. Right. That's this, right. This Miami Heat got some undrafted pieces. So the fact that they yeah. came together and get this far, that's very interesting. And, um, it's very impressive. Yeah. And another question that just came into my head, like, let's see, if you were to come back into, well, if you were to come into, if you, were, if, let's say the offseason happens, if you were to come, and if you were thinking about coming back to the NBA, if both the Miami Heat and the Denver Nuggets in 2023 were, come to, were, were to all come to recruit you, which team would you pick? Okay, repeat that again. Which team would I pick? What for? What? If both the Miami Heat and the Denver Nuggets were to come to rec- were were to come down to New York to recruit you to join their team next season, which team would you pick? Ugh. I'm going with the Heat because they're some dogs. I'm, I'm not even surprised. I'm going with the Heat. All yeah, right. Dogs. All right. Now on to another topic. Well. For those of you that didn't see, didn't see my social media, if, well, as you know, I was at the Liberty Sky game. We were playing oh, last there. year. A couple, a, t- a couple days after Brianna Stewart hit a game winning lead with seven seconds left on the clock to defeat them down in the shy. We had a 19 point lead and we kind of let that get away with us in the second That's half. Right and Courtney Williams it was, it was balled out. And funny enough, I became the Courtney Williams good luck charm because a few years ago I went to my first WBA game against the Land Dream. And uh, yeah, and, and Courtney Williams hit a game winner against the New York Liberty. Now she plays for Chicago Sky, and it's like I'm being a glorified good luck charm for her. So, uh, it, what are your overall thoughts on the Liberty? Like, what are your overall thoughts on this New York Liberty season up until this point and forward, too? Um, I think they're doing very well, you know what I mean? And just to, to, to you know, you think about the players and, and where they've came from and you know, the style of play right now. You know, at one point we looked down on the WNBA, like, okay, well, we always looked at the wrong things. You know, we always looked at, okay, how many people's in the stands? You know what I mean? But if we got to support those women, we got to support them. They These women can really ball. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, at one point I didn't watch it. And it's only because of the timing. You know what I mean? Like I'm always, you know, out and about. I'm always traveling. I'm always, um, uh, I was coaching at that time. You know, but now, I, I, you know, I enjoy watching the women play, you know, because it stems from the colleges, you know, so I'll look at um, the players from um, South Carolina, you know, and where they are now. It's like so much fun to watch. But for them to, to come back off that, uh, it was tough. You know what I'm saying? They they, they pulled the 19 point comeback. You know what I mean? So and the Liberty is actually a pretty good team. I I, I would have not expected them. You know what I mean? I, I would never expect them to lose, especially a nine point nineteen point lead. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. exactly. Because well, this is still the Chicago Sky that defeated New York Liberty in the playoffs last year. That is true. That is true. That is very the true. Liberty have not gone any further in the first round since 2015 when they were in the conference finals against the Indiana Fever. But that, mm-hmm. but, but put together the super team. I mean, what were you all impressed about the super team involving New York Liberty and the Aces? Mm. But you know, wait, repeat that question. I said, what do you, but this leads to questions like, what are your overall impressions about the super teams, New York Liberty and the Las Vegas Aces? Oh, oh, no, the Aces are really good, you know, and they got a good coach, you know. Um, so I think that's a good matchup. I think that would be a great matchup, you know, between those two teams because um, those those super, super teams, um, you can't knock like the other teams and you have like the sparks, you have like your iconic players, you know what I mean? You can't knock those teams, the, the, um, the links. So, um, I think that like as as they as they just displayed, they can get knocked off too. You get what I'm saying? So just like with football, any given Sunday, you know what I'm saying? Any given night, 
you got to come to play. Forget the super teams. You know, you got to come play, you know? So. And it's also true. It's not always about who you play. It's how good they're playing exactly. when you play them. Exactly. The Chicago Sky, they're supposed to be rebuilding team, but they were decent to begin the season. They can give you hard games too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Khalil is still there, and they added him with Maria Mayberry, so they got some good yeah, pieces to right build true. on. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, what they did was during the game, what I noticed, they forced, you know what I'm saying, the sky into taking some really, really tough shots, you know what I'm saying? So they really kind of put them out of their game. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, those using those type of strategies and making teams, you know what I'm saying, taking them out of their comfort zone, I think that's a great way to stop those super teams. You know what I'm saying? So you just take them out of their comfort zone. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Then that's what you have to do. I mean, yeah. the, the Liberty were doing everything right. They're moving the yep. ball well. They were knocking yep. down open shots. Uh, yep. Maria Johannes was showing you flashes of what, what yep. she was when she was all the way up for Europe. I mean, Sabrina, that's why I know, but at the very least, she done more than what the stats show. Yep. Yeah, Stuart, yep. It, it, it was it was only when, when we get to the second half and this guy came back into the lead, that's where everything came, imploded, like I said. And then, then yeah. and there were a lot of missed calls that the referees missed, or even when they did challenge it, they still got right. to Chicago because it was up ever so overturned. But right. it is, right. it is, that's basketball. That's basketball, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you were, I mean, obviously during your play days, you mentioned earlier that you didn't have time to want, you didn't watch the WNBA, but you had your own basketball career to worry about. Exactly. Chicago, exactly. When I interview you as plants are not buried. So, right. And, you know, just like anything, you know, so you figured three quarters, they was up, and here they are. They just stopped them the fourth quarter. You know what I mean? Like, just stop them. So, I think those are, were great. Those were great lessons for young kids, young girls who were watching the game because it's mainly young girls. It's probably some uh, men who strategize and can get some ideas from these professional women. So, you know, watching them and their strategy on how to stop this uh, a 19 point lead. You know what I mean? So I think that was very impressive. Very impressive. Yeah, very impressive indeed. Yeah. And, and yeah. well, the next up, they got the Minnesota Lynx, and hopefully they bounce back. Well, they, they, they well, the Liberty should bounce back from this loss. Yeah, well. absolutely. They, they certainly will. They certainly will. They, this, they got good coaching, you know, so they certainly will bounce back. Sometimes, like, the coaches can't translate a message when they're making adjustments. You don't have much time. You only get 30 seconds and 60 seconds, you know, and some media timeouts. But you figured you had to make that transition within a period. You know what I mean? And that period only gives you like a few minutes in between quarters, you know, so to translate a message like that, that's it's kind of difficult. And I think that's what the sky did. They, you know, they just took them, like I said earlier, out of their comfort zone. You know, sometimes you got to catch teams off guard, you know, just like what LSU, you know, did to Iowa and I, I, Iowa did to South Carolina. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you, got, you just got to catch them off guard. Yeah, I mean, and I know this is a part of the topics I the top topics that I told you I want to talk about before we get on the air. But since you brought it up, I mean, well, not a few months ago, LSU won a national championship. But yeah, yes. they already focused on LSU championship win, but they put a lot of heat on Andrew Reese and all the media he thinks she gets for throwing up game size. Well, as a basketball player, like, what do you think about the whole Andrew Reese situation? Oh, she's a wonderful player, beautiful young lady. I met her when she was playing in seventh grade when she started. She was playing AAU, but I had coached against her team when I was coaching for the Philadelphia Bells. And we was ninth grade. They were seventh grade, her team. This young lady was fundamentally sound. You know, she would bring up the ball and she was also had some height. I think she probably was about six feet or maybe six one at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, she was tall. She was very athletic, beautiful spirit. Um, she, She could just see the passion. You know, like I, every time I watched her play, you can just see the passion. So for that to tra- translate and grow with her into college, especially what she endured when she was at Maryland, and then she put she jumped into the portal and then LSU, transferred to LSU, that's emotional. You know what I mean? Because she was being recruited, you know, from in, in Baltimore and um, went to Maryland, stayed home. You know, sometimes you got to get away. You know what I mean? And um, obviously, you know, things didn't work out in Maryland, so she transferred to LSU to a coach that kind of took to her you know and um gang signs no emotional signs she didn't throw up any gang signs all she did was emulate with what the Iowa player I forgot her name now I'm sorry no Caitlin Clark Caitlin Clark all she did was emulate what she did you know what I mean and it was supposed to be just more of a competitive spirit she was just being competitive you know what I mean? And we've done it ever since we played any competitive sports. I don't care what sports we played, but especially basketball, when you're in the court, in the street, and she played with boys. You understand what I'm saying? So 
people were just, just got in their feelings and they didn't want to attack her. You know, they wanted to attack her. And obviously it didn't work. It didn't work, you know. No. As as God said, you know, no no weapons formed against us shall prosper. You look at she's flourishing, she's happy, she's smiling. You know, not everything is going to be, you know, full of rainbows and 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 glorious, but she's equipped, she's resilient, she's equipped to deal with those things. And all of this, you know, like oh, everything that she's been through, you know, adversity. Y- 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 <laughs> What else can what else, what else? You know what I mean? She's she's right now making a, a a living for herself by doing what she loved, you know, in spite of all of the attacks against her. Exactly. She even got to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated magazine not too long ago. And man, does she look good? She earned every every bit of it. She earned every bit of the positive attention. If there's anything negative, someone created that. You know what I mean? Because there's nothing about her that's negative. Nothing. Yeah, she's still a young lady and she's flourishing and we're all so proud of her. Anyone in the basketball industry, in the community, we all are so proud of her. And, you know, she she represents the young women on the basketball court. She carries herself very well. Yeah, especially, yeah, she really did. From I mean, as you mentioned, yeah. you coached against her during your time when you was coaching AAU. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and after that, later on, she also got a chance to play some her basketball, or at least at least one game of yeah. her basketball, which is yeah. Lansing Classic. And, um, yeah. and, mm-hmm. and one of my, and my co-hosts told me that how good she was back in, back in the same Summer Classic. I mean, Very good. Very like, good. It, oh, I didn't even finish. When we played against her, they my ninth graders, and my, mind you, my players all play Division One right now. They right now they're about to transfer and play graduate basketball. Good, you know, um, due to the COVID year, the extra year they received. So they're going to play. They graduated and now they're playing graduate graduate um, basketball. So anyway, postseason. I'm, I'm not even thinking straight right now. But yeah, she they going to graduate school to play ball. Anyway, when we was playing, I would think it was um uh, is their ninth grade year and Angel Reese's seventh grade year. We were playing in the tournament. The game got away from us. Angel Reese was balling. It already is balling. We got down by 15. We got down by 15. And um, I, halftime, I'm like, ladies, you guys are intimidated by her. It's just her. Let's go out there and play your game. I said, why? I know she's a wow factor, but do not let her take, don't let her take you out your game. You guys can't watch her play. You are playing against her. I know she's fundamentally sound she was very good then but bringing the ball up the court taking shots going in the lane driving and laying the ball up i mean she was phenomenally sound i, I she wowed me so halftime we went back out there we ended up beating by almost 20 points but still you know what i mean just for what she did in the first two quarters in the first i think it was we went by um halves so in the first half she really dominated so she always played with that of you know type of aggression you know and competitiveness so that's much respect. I, I I love her for that, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're always going to get good basketball from uh, Angel Reese. And the fact yeah. that you managed to experience it firsthand before absolutely. she to the player that she is right now with yeah, being absolutely. one up in college, that you, you, I mean, you got to, you, you can say it, that you personally got to know her up until uh, Yeah, and, yeah. And, and she's also fun to watch, you know? Like, throughout the years, fun to watch, yeah. Yeah, you're also going to get more fun back for summer basketball as well. The summer basketball series is about to start this summer, and well, it kind of already started thanks to 06 and in in, in in the West Forge Classic. I mean, but let me ask you something: like, what have you always? What are some of the enjoyments that you get from summer basketball year in and year out? Um. Wow. So first off. For summer basketball, you get to see all of the AAU players. You know, sometimes you can't really get to all these different high schools. And some of the players don't play together in high school. So summer basketball gives you an opportunity to um, explore talent, explore different levels of talent. And you see all the talent sometimes in one game. You know, like if I go to one of these AAU or EYBL games or EYBL tournaments, like sometimes I go visit, I call her my niece because I love her to death, Um, my, my friend's daughter. Yeah, she plays on one of the high level teams out of New York. She plays for Exodus, Lauren Swan, and um, she's a phenomenal player. You know, she experienced some highs and lows because she has a couple of injuries. But I mean, you're talking about resilient for her young age. That's a very resilient young lady. So to see her play amongst her peers and you have all the talent in one one team and then she's playing another talented team. That's what I love about summer basketball. You know, the talent level. You know, and the comp, you know, and the competition and the competitiveness, you know, with these young people. I love that. I love that. So that's what I enjoy about summer basketball. 
Exactly, and being able to see talent that you don't even know they don't even know that these yes yes yes. Not to mention, I mean, it, it, well, well, we, I mean, all it takes is for you to go to highlights of older summer basketball tournaments for these from from like new back from when Bankman and Rucker Park just begin all yes. the way all the way during the days of the eighty one mixtape tour. That, that's yes, that was that that? summer basketball. Actually, like that's actually my first event that I went to at the Garden back in two thousand six. Uh. Wow. Just, so I experienced it one there. And then um several years later, back in 2019, well, we always knew that Rooker Park was a thing from when Kevin Durant played ball there to when Kobe Bryant yeah. played ball there. Now, yeah. and, and as we're talking, and, and, and there's also another event at Rooker Park that you're going to be involved in that we're going to discuss later in the show. Absolutely. But, yeah. but right now, you got there are a lot of pretty interesting things coming up. I mean, of course, you're going to have the New York versus New York is my Gersh Park will look, look to retain the, the, the New York versus New York championship. And in, in the same thing, in the same token, we beat Lincoln Park. We we beat the wow. brakes off of indictment basketball. And, and I understand, <laughs> Ryan, if you're watching this, that not every kid that pulls on an indictment jersey you know, originated indictment or went to school around that area. I understand that. You, I mean, for somebody to follow summer basketball, you understand that. But come on now, let's be real. Indictment should never got beaten down like that. Oh, man. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. <laughs> but, but, um, it's always going to be a going, uh, you know, like that 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 competition between Dykeville and you know and, and all the other parks in the city, you know. So that conversation is always a given. Yeah, and before we transition to the HBC event, the HBC event we're having, I want to I want to like, what are some basketball courts that you plan to visit this summer during summer oh, basketball season? My favorite, um, fun. I love Rucker Park. That's just. Oh, it's like in this like iconic park. It makes me feel like I'm home, although I'm not from Harlem. But I love everything about Harlem. I love everything about the Bronx, you know. And because I went to school where there was various, you know, like various boroughs. Should I say? When I, I went to Murray Berkshire High School, and a, a lot of my friends they lived in Brooklyn, they lived in Bronx, they lived in Harlem on the West Side, you know, um, Washington Heights. So. <laughs> that the, the different cultures is what attracted me to to visit those areas like I played for the gauchos so going up to the Bronx I mean the culture is different you know everywhere you go you know the language even though everyone's from New York the language is different how they carry themselves is different you know it's still like you know some competitiveness with the different boroughs so I I love to go visit the gauchos gym Rucker Park and West Forth. West Forth is like someplace I used to live. I used to sit there for hours watching games or played in games there. So West Forth is like one of my favorites. You know, like Kenny Graham, you know, when he goes, I always, you know, give him a shout out. You know, I'm always looking for a hat or something, you know. <laughs> but um, they oh, they did a good job running programs out of there for the youth, for adults, you know, keeping people off the streets. So I think that, you know, those programs and those organizations need to get their flowers, you know, because um, this they develop a lot of, you know, professional athletes, professional individuals as a whole. You know, some of those coach, some of those players are coaches now, you know, if not in, in education, they're doing something well with the, with the youth and for the community. So, you know, I love to, you know, visit and, and see if there's people that I've known, you know, some of my peers and what they're doing. It's interesting to see some of them are coaching and doing very well. Yeah, man, you can't get away from summer basketball. I mean, well, uh, Gersh Park is literally, I mean, Gersh Park is literally right next Gersh door. Park, yeah. Let's just let's just let's just say that. And um, yeah, and, and some other, and and well, I'm going to continue my own builds up because because Nike Pro City, you know, you know Nike Pro City, right? Where Julius yes. Randle and, and Jalen Brunson and Obi Thomas yes. came together just to lose. Yes. And Tyler Tyler Bond, he, he played in that league. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, um, I forgot, this kid Ryan, who, who plays for New Orleans Pelicans, he played that league. Well, they're going to be it's going to be housed at LIU Brooklyn, so you should nice. definitely check it out as well. I do. Make sure you send me the information. Don't forget me. Oh, I'm not going to forget you. Just like I'm you. Not gonna, since like I'm not going to forget to talk about, since you mentioned Rucker Park is one of your favorite parks to go to, it's also the spot where, where even though HBC yeah. basketball, well, regular season on its own, doesn't start to like all the way in the fall, you're getting yeah. kind of, you're kind of giving some basketball heads a little taste of how HBC basketball is played out with that event right at the back. HBCU All Star Dreams Classic at Rucker Park. So, uh, yes, yes, what's yes. Tell me the, what's the idea behind having an HBCU basketball event and 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 the, the mecca basketball? 
Well, the whole concept, my my co-producer and I, you know, we always talk about, we are both HBCU alums. Um, he graduated from um, Lincoln University and I went to St. Paul's College, which currently is closed, which is so dear to me. It hurts my heart to know that, you know, we, we don't have a place to go back to, you know, like for homecoming. But um, the experience at HBCUs is is like no other. I've been passionate about it. So you, you, we try to figure out ways so we can kind of connect the HBCUs with the communities that we love. You know what I mean? And the different locations that we grew up in where we've been successful. So this HBCU All-Star Dream Classic, which is August 5th, 2023 on a Saturday, we have two games. We have women's games, which is unheard of because, you know, we always they always leave the women out. So women's game and the men's game. So women's game will be 430. The men's will be at seven. So this is an incredible initiative. And that aims to showcase the talent of the HBCU college basketball players. And the classic is a platform for these players to demonstrate the skill to NBA scouts, to coaches um, in hopes of securing a spot in any league, any professional league, which they, they have the talent that they have the talent to prove. If you look them up on paper now, some of them have played, maybe a few of them have played professional ball. Now they all are not recent grads. Um, and um, some of them have received honors in, in a different HBCU conferences, like the SIAC, the MEAC, the Seattle Blay. So a lot of them, the SWAC, a lot of them, are you know kind of elite play they are elite players and uh, most of them are you know some may not have the honors but the skill set you know the skill set i think the community will actually gravitate to you know you you will come out to see these players when the men and women and you'll think they're professional players you know they are they are to me professional athletes because it takes what 200 games 200 you know times to do something well and i think they've they're going to truly display that you know so this classic also serves as like an opportunity to celebrate the rich history and culture of the HBCU. So that's that's our our, our um, goal. Because if you look in the in the background here, you know it had we have the colors, and you have all of the different HBCU schools that we're representing, and it's it's phenomenal. We have Grambling State, we have John C. Smith, we have Winston Salem. I mean, the list goes on. So all, over forty different schools, you know. So it's going to be ten players on each team. So we have two teams. So you figure that's forty players right there with different schools, and we have. Phenomenal coaches. We have Kenny Anderson, world famous Kenny Anderson from Queens. Um, he's going to be coaching. You know, he went to Georgia Tech, and then um, he's a um, right now he coaches at Fisk University, which is a HBCU. He's coming back to get, get back to his community, coaching one of the men's team. We have Jason Armstrong. Uh, and we just have some phenomenal coaches who's also from New York, and for the women's side, oh my goodness. We have two coaches that are legendary and one uh, and two other coaches who are doing wonderful things in the community. And one coach, her name is Angie. And um, she, um, wow, she's, she's been a referee. So she sees basketball from a different side, you know? And I love that because I, I, I used to referee as well too. So I've refereed, I've coached, I've played. So I looked at, and I've also done been basketball. I've also um, worked in the front office. I was the basketball operations for director of basketball operations for ABA team. And um, so I looked at basketball from different angles, you know, so which is why it's easy for me to put on these type of events, because one, I, I know what the fans want to see. I know what the players want. I know what the coaches need. Um, I know what the community needs and I know what these players need. So I'm looking at it from different you know, aspects. So this is one of the reasons why this this event is so dear to me and to and so dear to my partner. Daryl Roberts, you know, but like I said, with that coach, we have two coaches, Vanessa Watson, she's coach at Bloomfield. The other coach, she's a, a pro coach. Her name is um, Coach Benito Wooden. She's phenomenal. You know, she's a phenomenal, she has a phenomenal history. She wrote a book and um, I'm going to post that on my page as well, but it's just the culture and what we're bringing to Harlem. You know what I mean? The history and the culture, the names of the teams, you know, Booker T's, you know, the the ML Kings, that's the two men's team. And then we have Sojo's Truth and Althea Aces. You know who Althea Gibson is, you know? They just named the street after her. So we just want to make sure that we combine the rich history and the culture of the HBCUs. It's not just a game. Exactly. It, it, HBCU is culture. And, and yes. I mean, you have so many, I mean, obviously you had the HR, HR Red Sox classes that you always do every fall. I mean, yes. you can come up with any other HBCU before with sports basketball, what you want. You can come up with that. You can come up with the, with yes. the HBCU classic, with the, um, the HBCU class that takes place in the presidential center every year. You can come up with right. the HBCU All Star game that takes place during the All Star break. You right. can't come up with something like this. Right. The fact that you're doing it in the summer basketball landscape, that's amazing. I mean, yes. you know what? 
especially for us New Yorker, this goes, we don't have an HBCU in New York. <laughs> right, right. Seriously. You sure don't. Yeah, so. so you have to. It's exciting. You know, it's going to be an exciting event. Actually, the tickets are for, for um per, not I'm sorry, not for purchase, but you can acquire tickets now on Eventbrite. So I have the link in my Instagram bio. And the tickets are totally free. Yeah, yeah. that is so amazing that you and that you're actually coming up with something like that. Yes. But, um, but like when, when people actually, I mean, I know you just elaborated, elaborated on a little earlier. When anybody that comes out to Brooklyn Park for the HBC All Star Jeans Classic, like, what can people learn as far as actually putting together a basketball product like that? Uh, one thing they'll learn is that it's not just PWIs predominantly white institution that have those players that there are excellent and, and um, phenomenal athletes that attend historically black colleges and university as well. So we want to display their talent because some of them are not televised as much as the PWIs. And, um, and that's what we want to encourage. We want to encourage the media. We want to encourage these corporations, these organizations to like, Hey, let's come on, shed some light on these players. They deserve it. They put in just as much work as some of these players that attend the PWIs. You know, and I'm not knocking PWIs, you know, so I because I attended one in grad school. I graduated from a HBCU undergrad and I attended one in in grad school. My ultimate dream was to attend Howard, you know, so um, and I never did. But it's not too late. You could always go, anyway, go as a doctorate or a second master's. <laughs> absolutely. And, um, you know, God willing, you know, you know, I'd be able to make it out, make it um happen. OK, so but. Uh, people will get to see the talent level, you know, of HBCUs. They'll get to see the culture, what it's like, because we're going to have the D9, we're going to have cheerleaders, we're going to have a band. They'll see what it's like. They already know what hip hop is. We're also, um, uh, what you call it, highlighting hip, hip hop's 50th anniversary this year. So they'll get to see everything that they're used to, you know, outside of Harlem, you know, I mean, inside of Harlem, but outside of Harlem, they're not used to the HBCU culture. So we're bringing that to Harlem. So like we have that hashtag, HBCU Harlem takeover. We're not trying to take over Harlem. We're just trying to take over their minds and show them what it's like to, you know, attend the HBCU in just a few hours. That's what it's all about. And, and, and well, I know mean, we're going to see a lot. I mean, you couple with any HBCU success story. You couple with Stephen A. Smith's Absolutely. success story. Oh man, you with Earl Monroe. You can come up with, with Steve Smith. My favorite. I love Herbal Road. Go with Steve Smith. You can come up and um, am, am, am I am I leading everybody out? You can come up with Stephanie. Big House Reddy. Gaines. Yeah, Big House Haynes. Well, you know what I mean? It was so Stephanie many. Stephanie Reddy. You can come up with Stephanie Reddy from NBA. Yeah, Stephanie Reddy, yes. Yes. You can't come up with a success story like yours. No, no. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, you really can't. You really can't. And yes, so sure. throughout this episode, I mean, for the past few days, for the, for the past couple of episodes now, I've had my guy Ryan Walker, who went to an HBCU Cheney University. Cheney, yes. And, and then I had this, this knucklehead Patrick Pollard, who, work, <laughs> who works at ISA St. Middle School in Queens. I started a little debate for two episodes in a row, and my cousin, not and my and my oldest cousin, who's also a contributor to the show, a little debate of LeBron James and Michael Jordan, because apparently one doesn't think LeBron's one's that great. But, where he's a smiling coward after leaving Cleveland the first time for Miami and having a losing record, and the other one, we 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 we're not suspecting his greatness, but we 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 never talk enough about the journey takes to get here and Michael Jordan. So uh, let me ask you this: Michael Jordan oh. versus LeBron, who do you oh. think is better? I had a better career up until this point. Okay, so the comparison between LeBron and Jordan is contentious one due to the differences in their their style of play, you know, so the errors they played in, the style of play, the teams they were a part of, we can't compare those two. Jordan was known for his ability to score at will and win championships, you know, while LeBron is known for his all-around game and his ability to make his teammates better. You get what I'm saying? So Jordan, his era, they had a different style of play. You know, so it's hard to compare the two, you know, and LeBron's modern day NBA is difficult to make, you know, an apples into apples comparison between the two because it just makes for an interesting discussion. Nonetheless, that's it. That's all that is. It's just an, an, a discussion, you know, and this this conversation has been ongoing for years, you know, with both players having their own set of accomplishments and their own accolades. 
you know, but if we just constantly explore their retro, you know, excuse me, their respective um, strengths, then and their weaknesses, then we just can't compare. I mean, if we focus on those, then now we have a better conversation. But if you're just talking about giving them the title as the goat or whatever the case may be, then I, I really don't want to go into that, you know, because we could go off for days, you know, how, yeah, how many rings, how many games. This is one that the sports talks all about. It's, it's meant to build a controversial topics like this. Why right. not compare the all-time, a four-time champion, even though he does have six losses in the finals, and the all-time leading scorer, both the NBA playoffs and the regular season, to a guy who's undefeated, even with one, one or two retirements in between the seasons that he played? Yeah. But this, it, honestly... If you look at it, there's no comparison. There's no one we compare the the Bulls to. There's no one we compare Scottie Pippen to on George, on um, LeBron's team. You know, there's no we can't compare apples to apples. You know what I mean? Put LeBron in back in the league when when Jordan was. He wouldn't he wouldn't last. He wouldn't last. Put Michael Jordan in this. Put Michael. Put 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 a young Michael Jordan at this era. He, he would have scored fight. double. Well, what he did score back then because we're talking about the the era is different. The era is different, you know. You had real post players back then. LeBron wouldn't have made it in the paint. LeBron scoring on Shaq at will, like the way he scores now. Shaq ain't moving out the paint. You get what I'm saying? Larry Johnson ain't having that. Charles Oakley, they're not having that, you know. And then we had those strong guards, you know, who can play defense at the wing. Where's he going? So now he can bulldoze his way into the paint, and everybody step into the side because nobody want to play that physical game, you know. So. My my number one goat is would always be Michael Jordan. And I'm a Kobe fan and I love Magic Johnson, but Michael Jordan brings something special to the game. You know, and it's funny because I had this conversation with someone where somebody asked me, How did I how did I hear about Michael Jordan? Well, we didn't watch basketball in my house. You know, we did not watch basketball growing up. Basketball to me was my favorite sport because that's the only sport that I can play individually. Like I can grab a ball and bounce it. It bounces back up to me. I can go to the park and shoot the ball. It bounces back to me. I can run and get the ball and shoot it. And it's still bouncing in one spot when I can grab it and shoot. You know, no other sport I can do that. I can't go get a football. You drop it, it's, it's bouncing every different way, you know? So that's why basketball became so dear to me. But we didn't watch basketball. I didn't really watch basketball until I got much older. We didn't have our own individual TVs growing up. It was nine of us in the house. Imagine our electric bill. Imagine my mom having replaced different TVs because they fallen off the dresser or something like that. You know, so we didn't have those days. We had the luxuries of playing outside, playing with our friends, coming in our own yard because we had a big house, big yard. So we play basketball. So as I was telling my friend, I was saying, listen, well, they would be like, never. I never heard anyone say like Mike or going up in the air. We heard commercials. So Essentially, I heard about Michael Jordan. I, I never saw him play at, at such a young age for me, you know? So that's my story in learning about Michael Jordan. That is kind you know? of the same thing with me. I mean, when I didn't know much about basketball, the only player I knew about was Michael Jordan. And then my cousin asked me, How, what, what do you know about Michael Jordan? What do you know about basketball? I just told He's him, saying, I don't know. He won a lot of championships. <laughs> what more do you want me to tell you? Yeah, I, I didn't know. Have have I, did, have... I didn't have TV up until I was like five oh. or six years old. And then when I... Well, the one I got, and when I did get, when I did get television, I didn't have cable. I didn't get satellite up until like the early 2000s. And I wasn't the basketball like that until high school. So, yeah. 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 And, and, yeah. and it was really nice. I, and when I started watching, it was LeBron's first year in the playoffs. Yeah. And I saw yeah. LeBron's career. I, I started year. watching it. Yeah. I started watching basketball when I was in my late teens, you know, and that was like only the playoffs because the Knicks were playing, you know, and I'm sitting there like, yeah, go, go, go. You know, I didn't know basketball as much as I do now. I started to do my own research you know, as I began to play, because I wanted to get better, you know, I wanted to be better. So I would watch and try to emulate players. I watched VHS, you know, cassette tapes where I'm just trying to get better, you know? So that's how I learned about basketball. And I love Magic Johnson's style, you know what I mean? The number 32, I wore the number 32 in high school, in college. So I loved his style and no look passes, the finesse of the game, you know? And then here comes Kobe, you know? Kobe just emulated Michael Jordan. So how could you love jo Kobe without loving Jordan? You know, so I finally came to the grips and, and been honest with myself and started really to, you know, think about my 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 iconic players, this in, you know, in my life, like the, who I love. So yeah, Jordan is 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 he's I, I can't, he's you can't compare him to to LeBron. I'm sorry.
Yeah, you can. I mean, at one point, Michael Jordan did have the most sport, uh, one of the top all time leading scorers, or well, well, sorry, behind only Kareem Abdul Jabbar before Kobe Bryant surpassed him, and then LeBron surpassed all both those guys as well. Right. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's that. But um, let me ask you this one question. I mean, if you were to coach a basketball team, a men's basketball team, and, and like which player would you recruit, Michael Jordan or LeBron James, or both? Michael Jordan. I, I can count on Michael Jordan to make the winning shot. I can count on Michael Jordan to give his all. You know what I'm saying? So the intangible things that Jordan, Jordan brought to the game, I don't see in LeBron. You got an interesting point. And now up this episode, let the put that sports talk. Make sure you can check out the HBCU All-Star Dream Scene Queens yeah, Classic yeah, yeah. at Rucker Park on August 5th. And also, don't get keep tasks of summer basketball. WWE action is going on. NBA finals are still going on. The LeBron Jordan debates are ongoing conversation. So, uh, yeah. Also, I didn't tell you, but I just finished writing and I'm about to publish my new book. It's called Embracing Veganism. Everything you need to know to go vegan. <laughs> Yeah, we can't sleep on that one. I'll, yes, we got out. Everything sure, you need to know. <laughs> I'll make sure to keep going on that one. And, and if you have, and for those, if you haven't read her book, My Little Tomboy, don't forget to check that book out as well. I mean, you do, I appreciate I mean, you. If you watch my if you watch my interview when I interviewed her for Planted Not Buried, you will be blown away by the type of story she had growing up. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And I, I won't forget, I gotta send you your ticket. So um I won't forget you. All right. I can't wait to see you there. And to all the balls out there, get your head in the game. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show.